next panel discussion is uh, well uh, we have our panelists right here and we're quite excited to talk to them so let me introduce them first we have sachin vashisht director and head of digital marketing hi hello guys uh, digital marketing paisa bazaar saurav saini head digital marketing and communications havels india hi everyone jayesh ulatil vp and gm india in mobi good afternoon all hi charu malhotra bhatia vice president marketing priloka limited hi hey guys and the session will be chaired by neeraj ruparel head of mobile and emerging tech group m hello guys well uh, this uh, session is going to be very interesting in app marketing strategies for an id less world in the last few months many businesses are feeling unsettled about the multiple dynamic shifts ongoing in media industry amongst such changes one is ad industry post cookie less world with majority of ad spends going in mobile first strategies and in app marketing programmatic enables a very secure and efficient delivery medium for brands however our, our advertisers and publishers ready for the world full of agile and new media formulations this panel will share their views about how programmatic can help with impact of advertising and help brands adapt new modes of targeting and measurement with ongoing changes so let's go ahead with the panel thanks so much uh, preeti i think you did a perfect context setting to me <laughs> So a lot of stuff coming up. Stay tuned to this event. That's what Preeti wants to just summarize. All right, super guys. I'm super excited to be here. So I keep uh, chairing a lot of these uh, panel conversations, but this one is special. So when we moved into it and we started jamming over the period of last couple of days, we actually ended up uh, gathering solutions out of our conversations, which is very rare. But yeah, so this panel, I'm, I'm super kicked about it, and uh, absolutely looking forward to kind of insights which are going to be coming in from my fellow panelists. uh i was just reading up catching up on this report from apps flyer which says about 14% of planet's app downloads are happening from india which is like super insane right that makes it like a breeding ground for uh in app marketing this is only second to china so this makes it so powerful for advertisers in terms of the ecosystem which is getting built on the app space and pandemic is kind of completely driven this so you move around and you see a lot of people who were never using e-comms are right? downloading e-com maps the fitness apps and you're seeing all across there's a rage in number of apps which are getting downloaded in the indian market right now not to fire up any advertising campaign on in app or even on mobile web it's quite a task today so a lot of it's a complete sci-fi experience so a lot of tech stack goes into it ensuring there's visibility uh, the viewability checks are in there they're in place measurement and lot of stuff which uh, gets into this particular on the tech side to roll up a campaign out there so at group m's access we ensure that all our clients even if they don't have deep pockets they get similar kind of a tech stack and similar kind of an experience when they are launching a campaign with us so that's that's one area of work which uh, we have built over a period of time obviously along with our partners like inmovi there's some super duper work which is happening in that space of launching campaigns and ensuring that advertisers get that buck for their money as we say this entire space change is a constant and the industry is going to undergo massive change now which is what this panel is all about which is we entering into this entire era of uh, idless world and there's a lot of work which is happening across the ecosystem in terms of getting the brands geared getting the platforms and the tech stack geared for it and we working with a lot of our clients to create the first party database so one way to counter this is to create first party database and use all the emerging tech stack to build that level of hyper personalization one of our most trending emerging tech uh, deployment recently is on synthetic video and voice we've been doing it for a lot of our clients but one which is caught the eyes the industry is the one which we've done for mondelez recently with uh, srk promoting local stores so that makes it really fascinating so in the world of uh, 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 id free id less world as we call it more and more personalized uh, data is going to get garnered and more and more tech stack is going to go along with it to build a lot of communication engaging conversations with those audiences with this i would just open up the panel and we would just start with my 
favorite person on the panel today is Sachin. I think we we really spoke and he went on talking about and 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 a big fan of the work which you are doing on the PII space. One of the early movers, uh, Policy Bazaar, in terms of building the entire PII stack. In fact, if uh, Cookieless World is going to benefit someone, it would benefit Sachin and team because it's going to open up a a parallel revenue model for you where you can co-op and work with uh, folks like your friend Saurav and create some magical solutions. So would love to hear from you, Sachin. Yeah, uh, thanks, thanks, Neeraj. So uh, for most advertisers, uh, go, going the cookie-less way, uh, uh, you know, is a big worry. You know, especially people who are uh, the big reliance on uh, these third-party cookies through different ad networks, right? Luckily for us, uh, uh, third-party cookie uh, reliance is not that much because we uh, are very heavy on the first-party uh, data set side. We started building uh, our first-party data since the very beginning, uh, you know, trying to uh, get newer ways to get that data more uh, uh, enriched uh, in a more sophisticated way. Uh, the first, uh, you know, step was to build that data lake. Uh, we we achieved that a uh, couple of years back. So uh, now the data is available to each and everyone in the organization who wants to, you know, uh, use it uh, for their benefit. The second thing is, you know, uh, why third party cookies are more relevant for advertisers are that they give you the contextual audience. If you are selling, uh, uh, let's say if I talk about Charu, if you're uh, selling home solutions, any kind of home solutions, someone who is in market, who has recently bought a home or, you know, who has recently shifted or who is uh, getting something done uh, would be very relevant and uh, advertisers would want to reach out to that audience. Now, uh, through first party data, that is something which is a miss because you don't know what is happening to your uh, data outside the space uh, uh, when they're in, you know, in uh, different, different uh, domains. How you can achieve that, uh, not uh, at the same level of uh, efficiency now, but, uh, you know, we started building a proficiency, uh, propensity model. You know, if uh, someone is on Pesa Bazaar's platform, he visited a few uh, months back, bought this, this is the kind of profile, uh, this is what uh, that person done, what could be the next product that uh, that person would be interested on. So that is another uh, domain we started, uh, you know, investing in, uh, giving us decent results. So, so we started doing all of these things uh, a few years back uh, and started, uh, these things have started giving uh, us good results now. So honestly, I'm not worried as far as this uh, cookie-less thing is concerned. Wow. Like I said, it's, it's pretty much like an opportunity. Uh, moving yeah. on, Charu, I would, and we were discussing about some of the fascinating work which you guys are doing on the contextual ad space. And here with uh, Sachin, I see fabulous synergy. So what's your take on what Sachin said just now? So see, um... I think very relevant and and uh, uh, with the with the whole noise around uh, the future in a cookie less world I mean when today most brands are relying on programmatic and obviously we've also been uh, we've been also working on programmatic with both first party and third party data the key now will be to start focusing on first party data and and how we can optimize it, how we can leverage it and gain more audience insights. Um, there's a huge scope of contextual advertising. There is huge scope of personalizing the content. And, and moreover, this first party data that we are collecting from our sources, and I will elaborate a little more on this uh, later. Uh, this is more drilled down with respect to consumers' demographics, consumers' interests. And for example, if there is a consumer who's going to, a, to any of the website looking for home renovation, bath renovation, then obviously that's, that's something for us and we used to kind of do programmatic from there. So right now our focus has been to build our data and move on to a more consent-based advertising. And, and, and what I mean by it is that we've been, we've started using our website, we've started using other, other uh, platforms that we have, where we as brand, we convince the customers to volunteer data about their preferences, their interest areas, their behavior. What's more important here is that my content has to be very, very engaging. So uh, I'll give you an example here. So for example, we have a, we're working on a bathroom planner kind of a, a tool where we give uh, 
inspiring visuals ambiances thematic designs to consumers where they can which they can download and create the bathrooms of their dreams so such kind such kind of a visitor if he's he's getting on to my website i mean he will definitely want to download those designs down download that newsletter and he will give consent to the to his information to his interest areas and that's happening because he's engaging with my content so that's that's one thing and and as i had mentioned to you yesterday also with respect to contextual advertising so for example we have urban clap and we have more a lot of plumbers and contractors there and those are key influencers for my brand as well so what we are doing is we are wanting to tie up with portals like this where consumers i mean that's urban club for example today is that go to place in case a person wants to do any revamp in his bath space so the moment he goes there he sees my he sees my ad and that's that's a relevant uh, that's a very relevant platform for me to kind of catch a consumer with with a high intent of purchase so that's that's uh, one thing apart from that we've also uh, started experimenting with a couple of beacons as you call it which are technology devices which we've installed at a couple of our stores again a different from form of programmatic but then they are helping us to do geo targeting around those hardware stores so these are for example in cities where wherever you have would that be nfc pardon would that be nfc devices or or how does it work so these devices the moment these are installed within the stores so the moment and see that's so the industry operates in such a way that you have these cohorts of stores in various places so these are these specifically designated hardware markets so if it's a consumer who's walking past my store if he's in that market he's actually there to buy a bathware or or something related to his home so he'll get automated uh, messages push notifications with us with with specific schemes offers which obviously then probably will drive him to my store so something like that we started on uh there's one more very interesting uh, example that i would want to share so we started we we experimented with a tool called adom so it's a ai based tool so here what we have recently started doing is we running an event based tracking experiment on our website hindwarehomes.com so where we track the user journey as a navigate through the website so this helps in identifying us in identifying what pages he he visited what products he visited and then track those buttons that he is clicking and then prop and then push the exact notifications to him so last couple of months so, so all focus is on building that first party database to make it more relevant for me uh, which definitely i mean we will also help me to kind of uh, do programmatic to him later on now this is i think it was a one of the fascinating piece of examples for the b2b segment because predominantly these blue collar audiences we struggle on media to kind of locate yeah, them exactly especially all these masons and carpenters and you get keep getting bombarded with a lot of briefs when they want to hit that uh, real cohort so i think coop is a way to go and partnering with platforms who are sitting on some really rock solid enriching data is going to be the next like now sorov does a lot of fascinating work there not just on the b2b segment like what charu you just mentioned but he does a lot of work on the b2c segment as well so sorov what's been your strategy uh to counter the cookie uh, what do you call the cookie sunset which is going to arrive shortly yeah so first party data third party data you know these are not you know very unique terms for all of us uh, we have been listening for long and for marketers is very tough for us how to use this data very effectively uh, to reach out to the consumer for our communication for top of mind recall uh but i think uh, yeah uh, you know for extensive reach as uh, sachin said uh, we've been using third party data cookies and everyone as a marketer we have been doing using multiple tools right but i think uh, uh, first party data is very crucial for uh, any of the brands uh, now though we are talking about the uh, less uh, kind of a scenario in coming up the years uh but uh, for brand like us uh, havels who been having like uh, 30 odd different categories you know different target audience different seasonality so first party data is very important for us like one consumer uh, if you talk about in a home right as charu said uh bath renovations right or uh, but for us it's like a consumer uh, our philosophy is deeper into your homes 
from your as soon as you start or renovate your houses from your wiring to your switches to your fans to your water purifiers to your air conditioners to your dishwashers to you know a lot of other uh, you know appliances even in your bathrooms also like geysers uh, personal grooming so when you talk about uh, you have a different set of people uh, all together when booking so first party for us is very important saying that here yeah, if i if i have one data piece right eventually i'm i'm going i can target that data piece 50 different ways and not that 50 different ways but from different communication which can be contextual which can be different categories offer blah 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 but for us this single data multiplies by 50 without even going to the third party right so uh, for brand like us yes you're right uh, it's very important crucial uh, uh, and we have been very sensitive in terms of capturing those data uh, i really like and appreciate uh, the fact where you know charu said uh, we have been integrated with uh, a tool which uh, uh, define the con- which actually you know see the consumer journey and put notifications into it uh, we also did that Uh, but sometimes it's very tough to evaluate uh, you know maybe brand to brand it might differ but unless and until we do not have a pure roi in those journeys of consumer if it's pure been communication yes you have been doing very good job contextual multiple thought process coming place uh, but i personally feel how roi would be calculated with that thought right so that also need to be uh, looked and we because we know you know there are two parts to it as i said from a com coms per se yes it's very important for us also uh, as a marketer we need to figure it out how roi versus we are going to convert it all right so let's just go to jayesh who would do a lot of heavy lifting on this panel talking about the tech stack uh, which i think none of us will touch on so inmobi is being really working on this space of unified id and would love to hear jayesh's views in terms of how it's going to all shape up in times to come and what opportunities would programmatic bring in for advertisers yeah neeraj uh, yeah so so let me just uh, take a step back and then just uh, have a quick uh, rundown on what you you and some of the participants uh, panelists have already talked about so one is uh, the cookieless world and one is the um, Uh, go, the ad id uh, uh, limited ad uh, app tracking world so the cookie world uh, the cookieless world is more uh, significant or more uh, uh, in line with the web and then we have the in app so india being a mobile first uh, nation in terms of internet usage we have close to about 80 85% age of in fact almost 97% of the first mobile users are on Uh, uh so first internet users are on mobile phones uh, or through smartphones and then you have close to 80 to 85 percentage of the time spent uh, upward of 80 percentage of time spent on internet uh is in app and not in web so yeah. that gives a context and here is where the relevance of the ad id and the replication of the ad id that is probably being looked at by google the idfa changes then affect india so much because of the 3 percentage market share that uh, apple has specifically but in the case of the gid uh, change which is bound to happen probably with uh, android 13 more likely in 2023 24 than in 2022 uh, there is obviously going to be change changes in the way we look at it so obviously what it uh, means is that you have uh, in terms of targeting you will have limitations in terms of tracking you will have limitations in terms of frequencies that you reach out to a consumer uh, that will have limitations and obviously in terms of attribution also you will have limitations when you look at this scenario uh, the ideal way and this is one of the questions that you had put across to me uh, was how do how do uh, uh, ad- how does an advertiser look at this scenario and how does he prepare for this um, considering uh, the gid is going to be maybe with the kind of adoption that we are seeing or the opt-ins that we are seeing in idfa um in the idfa case uh, the we might see up, uh, in the range of maybe 20 25% opt-in but the rest 75% will be um, null characters in terms of the gid so how do we reach out so the best thing and all of you have touched upon it in fact uh, uh, sachin already mentioned uh, about the first party data the first party pia data is something which is going to be of extreme significance and various 
advertisers, companies, clients uh, are all at different stages of this evolution in terms of how they are looking at first party data. Sachin, and uh, you will find a lot of the uh, digital native clients or who are predominantly uh, doing their business on digital, uh, having a lot more of the data sets sitting with them. Whereas if you look at a, uh, an FMCG company, you will find that that journey is probably just begun in the last two, three years because the significance of data, that data never had significance earlier on. Now it has become significant and, and that journey is coming. So that building of the PI data pool, like, the, uh, like Sachin was saying, becomes an important proposition. And why it becomes important is as we move on, getting this PI data, having our own consumers data with consent with you, and then ensuring that it is enriched with the kind of attributes that you can get from others, it becomes easier for you to have it matched to a PI based unified, unified ID, which would be there in the market, which is already there in the market. And in that world that we are talking about, which is maybe two years down the line, this marriage of sorts becomes very important. Now, there are may, many ways of going about collating this uh, PI information, normal promotions. I think Charu mentioned about newsletters, uh, sorry, she, uh, Charu mentioned about uh, uh, exclusive uh, content. Uh, enabling exclusive content for sharing the PI information. Uh, there could be several other ways in which you collate that data, but ensuring that this data uh, is captured and it is growing, that becomes important for us. Now comes the second point in terms of what all can we do with this data. Uh, obviously, I, I mentioned, so it, it can be with a second party data, even where you marry with somebody of convenience, say, for example, uh, Charu, uh, your, your brand could marry with somebody uh, like say maybe a magic bricks who has a set of data and both of you are complementing each other. And that is the kind of information that can be probably looked at by a third person, third party as, as in a uh, third party clean room uh, where you can marry the data and have enrichment of that data. That is something which will work. Now going on, uh, moving on to how this is going to work in the real world uh, once this changes start happening, like a uh, couple of people mentioned when you're targeting programmatically, even with one piece of data, like such uh, Sora mentioned, having uh, able to reach out contextually in different contexts, that becomes important. Uh, whether we are able to uh, give the right kind of information or pull out the right kind of information, have the right kind of, uh, you know, communication going out. Uh, uh, Neeraj, you did mention about uh, the location based or, or I think uh, the Cadbury's one was where in the AI enabled uh, audio, uh, Shah Rukh Khan audio, which was uh, custom, custom. Uh, it was a dynamic creative optimization. It was an AI based one that was done. Those kind of things can be developed and that will be, that can be programmatically done. And that is important. And that is what the world is moving into. And that is where we will, uh, we will be in two years down the line uh, or uh, in, in a two year uh, time frame. Currently, India is probably in a 20 to 25 percent is programmatic um, I know, uh, you know, the kind of uh, programmatic spends that is happening in India is probably in the range of 20 to 25 percent of all digital uh, ad spends. But that is moving very fast. Maybe uh, it will start looking at uh, 70, 75 percent programmatic in the next two, two to three years. And that is where all this information is going to be important. Um, I hope uh, I've been able to touch upon a couple of the things that you've asked. Neera. So what's been your strategy to get more and more brands into in-app based solutions for consumer engagement? Since we have brands on the panel, what's your pitch like? <laughs> yeah, so I, I, I think uh, there have been consistent pitches that have been going out to Saurav and Sachin. I don't know, Charu, I haven't interacted with, so I'm not too yes. sure. So we have, uh, we have a huge repertoire of uh, stuff that we take to market and uh, which can be delivered programmatically. Like for example, location-based or polygon-based uh, targeting, which can then give to an off online to offline attribution, which is important for some of these categories uh, that we are mentioning. Charu mentioned about her stores where they had the beacon. If, what if we are able to track what is, what is the evolution of the consumer from an online ad, uh, 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 you know, seeing an online ad to going ahead into that store of uh, Himware, that becomes important. So that is one solution. Uh, going ahead, I, you talked about the uh, creative optimization, the dy dynamic creative optimization, whether we can have it based on this PIA data layering in terms of going about and specifically not more than contextually in terms of personalizing the ads according to the data that is available with us. Is that a possibility? Yes, that's a possibility. Or for that matter, looking at APIs, uh, you know, creating rich media uh, 
to solutions, creative solutions based on APIs. It could be time of day, it could be, uh, you know, um, it could be loca location, it could be an air quality index. We have done so many of those things. And those possibilities that there are a huge number of possibilities that we can- Taking, taking this, uh, the, the huge opportunity which you just relayed, going back to Sachin, if any of these opportunities you must have applied at Policy Bazaar and is there a success case which you would like to share it with the audience? Uh, yeah, so, uh, you know, Policy Bazaar uh, uh, is working with a lot of in, uh, insurers, right? And there was a uh, issue that people who uh, usually, uh, you know, um, come to Policy Bazaar to compare and there were instances when they uh, just uh, drop off and go to the manufacturer directly and uh, purchase from there, right? So, uh, and there was a big revenue loss uh, in, in this entire process because we have a, a, a platform where we uh, educate our customers about different policies, uh, what are the pros, cons, et cetera, et cetera, and so that they can make an informed choice. And ideally we would want them to buy from us, but you know, uh, most of uh, them they do, but some of them they, they drop off go to the manufacturer because of some, uh, reasons and that they buy from them right so we uh, we realized this issue we realized the opportunity also and we uh, uh, you know uh, made agreements with uh, these insurers most of the insurers and now we have a system if someone drops from policy bazaar uh, and goes uh, to a manufacturer site to buy directly uh, we know that this person has gone there they know that this person uh, evaluated their policy on us and then there was a clear attribution and uh, th this gives us, uh, you know, uh, basically, you know, a, a leeway in terms of, uh, you know, uh, the seamless, uh, overall seamless journey, attribution, revenue optimization, et cetera, et cetera. Right. So that was one. The other uh, thing which we did in Pesa Bazaar. So, uh, you know, uh, in lending products, uh, finding the right audience is very crucial because uh, the rejection rate is very high both in terms of loans, in terms of credit cards, people who apply, they do not get it, right? So uh, we uh, have our own uh, first party data and we know that this is, and, and you know, interesting thing uh, with lending is that there are only a set, fixed set of people in India because for a new to credit person, it's, a, it's very difficult to, you know, get a lending product, the first lending product. They usually get it from their own banks, uh, the credit card, which is a pre-approved or something like that. But most of the time, 95% of people, uh, they are from the same pool, right? They, they, they keep on taking a credit card, a loan, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, right? So identify that person uh, is very important. So again, uh, we uh, have our own uh, segment and we, we try to capture that segment through different one-on-one uh, -on -one or, or what I would say, uh, you know, utilizing the uh, second party cookies, which you just mentioned, getting into one-on-one -on -one agreement with an organization, utilizing their data sets, because, you know, finding out a new person and like then- Hotstar and Flipkart is a classic mm -hmm. work. Yeah. yeah, so, uh, you know, uh, buying audience, getting someone on board and then checking whether this person is eligible or not. Uh, we, we do it otherwise. We know that this person is eligible. Let's go and find him on other platforms. Right. So that's right. the other way of optimizing our media spends. Going back to Saurav, every time I speak to Saurav, uh, Saurav is uh, the, the pressing point for him is uh, the inventory has to be on target and it has to be in the brand safe environment. So Saurav, how does it how does it all shape up in the in-app world, the brand safety? What's your view on that? Uh, yeah, so uh, it's been like more than 10 years being a brand custodian. So it's been in the in the blood, <laughs> you know, always uh, brand was on the, on the priority. So uh, brand safety in multiple levels, uh, even in uh, programmatic, we always uh, use multiple tools, right? So that uh, uh, our brand... Uh, communication are uh, you know the the ad has been served to the right audiences at right point of time at the right particular uh, way it should be so that the spill uh, is minimized uh, as much as uh, we can uh, you know uh, very traditional company though as i said uh, i'm uh, in working in very conservative and the way we think about our consumer is again as i said communication need to be very precise and uh, thoughtful, whatever we think 
in terms of doing so uh, which i believe yes we we tried uh, multiple times uh, through programmatic right uh, uh, to different audiences uh, uh, the proper uh, you know time of targeting uh, what kind of roi we can calculate it with different few categories which uh, where it can be calculated in and to be honest uh, yes we uh, by using this uh, entire thought process uh, to the right audiences right time and the proper roi uh, we achieved all those things so yeah so That's so what's your favorite campaign when it comes to engagement with first party audiences any any work which inspires you so pani se panga mat lo for water purifier which we did almost two years back was my favorite uh, i know charu is laughing so she must have seen that <laughs> Oh, that was a good one. <laughs> yeah. So we did a very you, interesting. Charu, what's your sense on uh, brand safety and ways in which programmatic uh, advertising can be leveraged in the in-app world? And yes. what's your as marketer? What is what is the ecosystem? What we should be doing to get it on track? Is so that you marketers put your a hundred percent onto it, and we can look at uh, massive scale using this tech stack what we are building. See. i i feel today the uh, i mean since last 2 3 years we all know how how the world of apps has changed and in app environment definitely today is a is a great canvas for maximizing user attention and and all marketers all brands are wanting to capitalize on it a small screen premium feel of the in app environment so to say definitely users are more engaged with the ads uh, mm. you can also optimize the Ad space and hence create a more impactful ad when you're talking about an app advertising. Uh, there's high level of personalization that you can do. Uh, there are better opportunities to reach out to the to the users. You can have video. You can have display ad, adver- banner advertising, any kind of pay- playable advertising. All of that is possible in in-app advertising. So ha- having said that, uh, see when I talk about Hindware as a brand, definitely last couple of years we've adopted the digital way. i mean i would say more of a digital way where we not just depend on online but we it's more physical stores also that we have and the physical stores hold a lot of importance here where the consumer wants to go touch and feel the product and then buy it but then uh, the fact of the matter is that 90% of my research or the search is happening online before the consumer actually walks into a store and buys a product and hence uh, for me first party data also becomes very relevant uh we didn't i mean a couple of years back we did not have so much focus on developing that kind of a data but today the data comes from various sources not just online but offline as well so when i talk about the data collected from in store walk ins i talk about email marketing we talk about call center data and interactions that happen at call center from um, um at at hindware lot of service data so last 5 years if i were to uh, uh, accumulate service data then it's huge data that we have lying with us that we are now putting on to crm and trying to see how we can probably um, have some repeat purchases there so yes uh, because all of this data rests within the system it's all the more important for us to uh, see that the data is safe and it is it, it kind of worked on well so both optimization as well as, as well as leveraging the data is what we are trying to do at all in all respects All right. So over to Jayesh. You've been at the forefront of this uh, changing universe. So what's your what's the kind of measures which you are taking at Inmobi to see to it that the ad campaigns which are running on in-app is in the brand-safe environment and all the checks and balances. If you could touch upon that, I think you would do it the best. I was having this cough, so I muted myself every time. Ah uh, well, <clears throat> brand safety, as you know, it's a very touchy topic. It is uh, <clears throat> not just. it is not just from a perspective of, there are different types of brand safety that we look at one is from a contextual brand safety one is from the right kind of targeting so like for a liquor brand what is brand safety different for uh, brand safety for uh, so maybe a uh, what do you call a hinwear like product or or probably a policy bazaar like product right <clears throat> so uh, what we of course the biggest advantage of in app is basically the there are several levels of checks and balances which have been taken care of so in app means there is a certain level of uh, brand safety which is guaranteed beyond that point is where we are talking about the contextual safety and also the right kind of audience safety so 
when we look at say a, a specific category which should only go to or the uh, reach out should only go to a particular target audience that is possible with the kind of uh, you know signals that we have we are able to uh, reach out to that specific audience hence making it clear for the brand also that okay the communication will only going to a specific audience uh, unlike in the case of a television where uh, an ad will be it could be seen by anybody not that it cannot be seen by anybody even a handset which is probably being mapped to as a specific ot or otr or a, a particular target segment can be used by somebody else i'm not denying that but having said that that basic check check and balance uh, is there in terms of taking a brand to the consumer the third part which i also wanted to mention is about the contextuality of things like for example no brand wants to be associated with a negative context right so like for example how about uh, say a havels brand the pani the water thing itself if you can take up, take that in a context what if it is being advertised in a context where water there is a lot of issues on water uh, maybe that is the right one maybe it is not so making sure that that is also not affected or rather that kind of contextuality is also taken into account is possible in the in our environment we we can have those block sites uh, you take it away from news you take it to specific uh, apps uh, and categories of apps where there is no contextuality which will affect that particular brand or its safety that is something which we do so in effect i think uh, in app any day is much better in my mind than what you would find on the web or or, or probably on uh, in web <clears throat> and we have all the uh, different methods that i have already laid out to make sure that brand safety is adequate so jesh you deal with uh, the maximum uh, publishers in the in app ecosystem yes. so in terms of collating all that so how what's their reaction to this uh, uh, changing universe uh, of this cookie less world and the id less world what are their reactions are they receptive to it or see, do you see any kind of resistance from their side see the, there's no point in resisting this is something which is bound to happen if google does it does it right because everybody is resting either on a, a ios is anyone saying i'm going to shut business and move off no chance <laughs> see <laughs> i can i can talk from the point of view of certain global context where idfa has had its effect like for example uh, there are certain publishers who have said okay i am not going to collect this data so uh, apple requires uh, a, a pop up box a pop up to be shown the moment the app is uh, this thing and the consumer to tick whether he's opting in or she's opting in or opting out there are uh, publishers who have very clearly called out that i don't i'm i'm only transacting with this data i just want the user id and this particular data from the consumer i'm not going to be using i am not showing any ads on that particular platform hence i am not even going about with the uh, pop up i'm not even showing the pop up now if you look at it the kind of impact see not in india but outside say in the western world or probably in markets like japan anz singapore the idea of a change was definitely seen as something which will disrupt the market but honestly if you ask me it hasn't had that much of a disruption in fact there's been certain blips but not like it is you know catastrophe or you know the cookies crumble completely if like that so and in the in the context and that's that's the evolved market right in the evolved market obviously there is a lot more uh, privacy concern look at an india market apart from the you know the sec a1 or the uh, you know the uh, really top uh, segment of category uh, the segment of people a lot of people not, not even bothered about in fact their uh, awareness levels on privacy of data is very low so when it comes to the gid deprecation or or probably what you will see a, a similar kind of idea of a change that is going to happen in the google ID, ad, ad id i i anticipate a lesser of an impact as compared to even idfa but then you never know how things change so i i will still be prepared i really want to be prepared and i will always urge my uh, you know my partners my advertising partners to actually be working towards an area and anyways the one things that i mentioned earlier works in their favor uh, the collection of the first party pi data the various things that you can do with it because it is consented data the various mix and matches that you can do the kind of enrichment that you can do the kind of personalization that you can do is out there for everyone to see so why should you delay on that just because gid will impact or not impact shouldn't be the reason for you know going ahead with that is or not going ahead with that is my my take on the whole whole thing so i think this was a super interesting panel conversation and i believe uh, audience must have really gotten a lot of insight from all you guys 
let's just round it up and uh, hear it from all of you in about 30 seconds. What is so promising about the changing universe? Let's just start with Sachin, who benefits the most from this changing universe. Yeah, so like, you know, uh, Jayesh uh, mentioned, uh, you'll have to live with it. You can't do anything about it. What you can do is, uh, uh, you know, uh, being prepared, uh, you know, being more focused. You to Find opportunities like you've done. Yeah, uh, being prepared, uh, being more focused on uh, the first part of party data enrichment and, you know, uh, devising use cases. How can you utilize uh, that first party data? Uh, having said that, you know, uh, the biggest uh, loser uh, in a less word would be Google, right? Because 80% uh, of their revenue is dependent on ad sales and uh, the uh, kind of options they provide to advertisers in market, uh, this person is in market for loans, they, they collect all these information. So if they are not worried, why should we, right? Uh, so uh, uh, on the other hand, you know, uh, as long as uh, the programmatic is concerned and the safety is concerned, I think uh, marketeers will figure out a way uh, to utilize their first party data better. Uh, like uh, you mentioned that it's the beginning for, uh, uh, you know, firms like FMCG or consumer brands like Saurabh and Charu, uh, you know, uh, more and more we'll focus towards our own first party consented base, uh, uh, you know, communication. It will be better for users because today uh, users might not be uh, bothered, especially in tier two, tier three cities about privacy. But uh, as time will move forward, they'll become more aware, uh, you know, about the harms of uh, getting that, that their data uh, being misused. So, you know, uh, we should be prepared uh, beforehand and it will be better for uh, consumers. So eventually it will be better for us also because, uh, you know, your first party data is more engaged. They know yeah. you, they have encountered, uh, uh, they, they have basically used your product and services. So they have certain bit of trust in, in uh, your brand. So it'll be easier to convert them than going after uh, a new set of people. So this change is basically pushing you to get to get you to know your customers better. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. Char, you want to go next? Yes. Uh, so I completely go what uh, uh, Sachin said right now. And, and as as uh, digital advertising faces a cookie less future as as we are envisaging i mean i feel privacy laws need to be respected by by uh, everybody joining the table whether it is publishers advertisers brands marketers all of us and uh, even when third party cookie becomes a thing of the past a precise ad targeting with my first party data definitely still stays relevant and Probably that is a way for me to uh, uh, understand my audience better, uh, deliver ads that convert, have more ROI with whatever uh, monies I'm spending. And uh, whether brands decide to engage in transparent advertising that gives consumers the freedom, as I was talking earlier, uh, take their consent and, and then try and understand their interests and behavior. And let the consumers decide what content they are wanting to receive. Uh, I think that that consumer with a high degree of intent has has chances to convert. And uh, while we drill down the first party data better with the demographic, geographic, uh, psychographic parameters, uh, we as brands will be able to do much smarter, high quality targeting uh, to get the customer across the funnel. So I'm quite- All right, super. Saurav, you want to go next? Quick 30 second rapid fire. So I think uh, as soon as, uh, you know, the future uh, with cookie-less will come, uh, we all marketers uh, know about it, uh, maybe in two years or three years, but for sure it's going to be tough job for all the marketers, right? <laughs> so target to the audiences and we get need to be prepared with the first party or the second party uh, data. Uh, I think uh, as uh, Charu rightly put it in, uh, privacy forceful advertisements is going to be again uh, eliminated in uh, near future. So contextual thought communications were very prominent to get engaged with the consumer. Third, uh, yes, you rightly put it in, unless or until you do not have, uh, you know, first party, second party in app data, I think the future lies in there itself. Uh, so uh, these are my submissions in that time. Super, Jesh. Yeah, so I think I've said it all. Uh, yeah, so see the 
advantage is there are, there are there is enough work going on in terms of uh, unified ids and ensuring that this transition is not going to be uh, tough in fact we are in that space where we will we'll be able to help any of our uh, partners to actually translate this data meaningfully convert it into enriched data ensuring that uh, that data is going to be uh, you know beneficial for them in terms of the right kind of targeting in, at the in the event of a, a of a, a gid or a, a ad id not being present as well so that is the uh, i think we are currently working with multiple partners in fact in terms of taking this this projects for them uh, who have started building their data uh, the first party pi data how how can we add to it how can we add enrich that data and ensuring that our uh, you know audience intelligence platform can be used for them to target the right kind of places and uh, right kind of uh, uh, you know uh, targets that they want to get to so that's about it i think uh, it is bound to come just be prepared uh, there are there will always be a solution the the industry has evolved it will continue evolving there will be new solutions which will come up i don't think we should be worried we just need to be prepared all right thank you thank you so much guys for this insightful panel conversation thanks so much audience thanks group m zaxis and e4m for evangelizing this space and uh, have a great conference thanks. i'll see you all thank you so much bye bye thank Cheers. you thank you everyone take care bye see you